Thanks for being here, guys. Uh, so just wanted to tell you more about what we do. Um, and uh, basically, oh, this is our team, uh, which with, like, without which like, we wouldn't be able to do anything. Uh, really great multidisciplinary cross-country uh, team that we've been able to build. And uh, basically, the thesis of our work was that uh, like in the region we operate in, like most people are unbanked, like over 80%. And the reason why they're unbanked is not because of a lack of a banking system. The banking system is there. It's just that people don't trust it. And the number one reason, actually, one has to say it, is because you have all these small merchants that like cash because it doesn't give traceability, uh, and hence, you know, it allows them not to pay exactly the taxes that they should. And that trickles down to the consumer. It's like the consumer is like, why do I need to have a bank account if at the end of the month I have to withdraw all my cash to basically like buy my milk and bread? And what was interesting about the region when we started back in 2017 is that most on-demand services were pretty much in existence. And when we looked at the details of the region, most people were spending their money pretty much in transportation and food. Transportation, because you have very big cities, very high density population, and most people were unbanked. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, and most people, uh, 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 sorry, uh, I meant to say like the transportation system uh, was pretty much archaic. Uh, and then food, like there isn't much else to do but to buy food, but to buy food like given you know, like how large the family sizes are. So um, our thesis was like, why don't we use on-demand services because they solve important and immediate needs. And of course, if we execute well, we can have a very large user base that subconsciously trusts us. And so once you have that trust, then, then it's actually what it makes sense to uh, offer payment services. And what's cool about this business model is that on-demand services are multi-sided marketplaces. So we're not just targeting the consumer. Uh, we're targeting the supply, who are the drivers and the couriers. We're targeting the merchants that are in our ex ecosystem. Uh, and then more importantly, we're also connecting our merchants to the FMCGs, wholesalers, distributors, you name it. Um, and that gives us basically like a four-sided marketplace and a whole ecosystem that we tap into that we can offer payment services to. And when I say like offer payment services to, it's not just like in terms of uh, uh, you know, giving these solutions, but you could leverage some of the sites of the marketplace in our business. Uh, so for instance, like today, we use our drivers and couriers as mobile agents to collect the cash and transfer the cash into electronic money. Um, and that's really powerful, because like we have a network of over like 100,000 um, drivers and couriers. And so at the end of your ride or at the end of your delivery, um, say like your ride costs you $10, you're going to pay for that ride and you can add money to it, which will go to your wallet like in a very seamless way. And that has really allowed us to actually leverage the power of the, uh, the on-demand services to get people uh, into, uh, into our payment services. So that's kind of you know, like our business model from day one. And of course, like when we started um, executing, we wanted to start with the service that had the highest growth potential. And ride hailing was actually there because, as I mentioned earlier, very big cities, very high density population, and transportation is archaic. Um, and it was really great product market fit uh, for us. So without actually spending much money, we were able to grow that, uh, uh, that uh, market segment like very significantly, as you can see here in the graph, like in black. And then we were lucky that we actually started food delivery right before uh, COVID. And we um, really pushed for that, like when we saw what was happening in China and other parts of the world, that allowed us to keep growing through that period. And of course, you know, like when things like got better in the region, it even actually exploded. And we, were, uh, and we introduced like a third vertical, which is grocery delivery, uh, with like very sound unit economics. And actually like what drove really this growth is our ability to cross sell between the products. And this is what you can see here. This is kind of like the retention curves that like, we get uh, on a 12-month cohort. Uh, and you can see that you know, like, through the cross-selling, we can leverage quite a bit and to have like, a very high retention for both delivery and ride hailing. Uh, not just that, but even like, the spend per user uh, as you know, like, uh, months go by increases significantly for both delivery and ride hailing. And that really has been key for, uh, for our growth. Uh, beyond, you know, like, it being able to you know, like grow in a very healthy way, our cost of acquisition is actually very low. And we don't give many subsidies because of that power of cross-selling. Um, it turns out that you know, like the way we've been building things and like targeting you know, like needs and necessities makes the cost of acquisition very small. Um, and even actually makes, uh, makes it a lot more organic than you know, like paid. 
Uh, and then you can see you know, like how much LTV over CAC we can get uh, in, in our current business, which really makes us unique in the region. Uh, we're the market leader in uh, like the, what we call like the Maghreb region. That's Algeria, Morocco, and Tunisia. And you can see like, even like, with some bigger players um, that come from other regions, uh, we're still you know, like the key player. And uh, we, we continue to be, hopefully, like, uh, over, uh, well, forever, <laughs> not just like the next years. All right. Uh, what did really help us you know, like beyond like, the execution and having you know, like this uh, multi-sided marketplaces um, uh, and cross-selling? Uh, first, the brand. Like, we're seen as the big local champion by both the users and the governments where we operate in. Uh, regulatory, like because we're that local champion, we've been able to actually work with regulators to push for laws uh, that were very helpful. Uh, network effect, of course, the advantage that we have is that when we acquire users within a certain vertical, we have the ability to actually get them into the other verticals pretty much for free. And that really is extremely powerful. Um, and uh, the other thing is that we have very low OPEX uh, because of like the low cost of living in the region we operate in, salary masses are actually much lower than what you have in Europe. And that really allows us to, to remain lean and have a profitable business, actually. And the ecosystem of services really allows us to actually give like, more work for our supply. Um, and so they're full, whether that be through ride hailing, food, or grocery delivery. Um, they're actually, like, we're pretty much maximizing their utilization rate you know, like through the day. Uh, and uh, uh, through their lifetime, you know, like within our platform. And finally, and more importantly, uh, and this is something super important, is that like you really need to know who your customer is and build your product based on the culture of the region, as opposed to you know like trying to copy what has happened uh, elsewhere. And that was really key, also like in our success. Like we make our design super simple, very intuitive, and very highly relevant to the region we operate in. Uh, and like. People like, don't know really uh, well our region, but it's like, actually like, very, very interesting. Um, and if you look at not only just like, the GDP per capita, uh, but also like, the number of cities that actually have like, a, over like, a million population, uh, you can see that you know, like, a large number of cities are big, and we can actually tailor to. Like today, we are, uh, we are only in 45 cities, and we can actually expand into even further. And what's more interesting, actually, is also like, the Gini coefficient of these countries. So if you take a country like Algeria, it has a Gini coefficient of about 28, which is pretty much like the same as Sweden. That means like your middle and upper class is actually like super duper robust with, uh, with very interesting um, uh, purchase power. Um, and uh, the other thing is also GDP per capita. Algeria has the second largest GDP per capita um, after South Africa, Tunisia the third, and Morocco the fourth. Uh, and what's actually not accounted for, like in these numbers, is in the informal market. So if you take Algeria, which is like a $200 billion GDP, there's another $100 billion unaccounted for in the informal market, which is like free of tax. So the purchase power of people actually is much higher than what people think. It's actually even higher than or about the same as like some like southern European countries like France and Spain. Um, and the other thing is like really young, uh, young population with a very high uh, cell phone penetration. You actually like, have higher penetration than you know, like, even like, electricity and water, which really like, makes it like, super duper uh, uh, interesting virgin market to actually acquire very quickly. Uh, more importantly, 77% like of the growth uh, of that the, the world is going to see over the next 30 years is going to happen in Africa. Uh, out of like the 2.2 billion, you're going to have about like 1. Uh, uh, 1.7 billion that is going to happen on the continent, uh, which makes the opportunity even bigger as we go over time, hopefully, and build you know like a last, uh, last, uh, I mean a lasting technology company in the region. All right, I think that's all I have. Thank you so much for listening.